Hello and welcome to another Wardy's Waffle Farm update. But just before we get into what's the, what we've been doing this last week, Agri have actually got uh, an, another event coming up, but this time it's in Wiltshire. It's near, uh, near Marlborough and it's at Ramsbury Estate, um, at Oldbourne near Marlborough and Wiltshire on June the 30th, a week on Thursday. I'm just looking at it now on my iPad here. You are all invited. There's various sessions you can see on the screen. I'm putting the invite up now, various sessions and registration details, but it's looking at um, opportunities for spring barley in tomorrow's world with regard to brewing. And Agri are one of the leaders in looking at what they call the heritage varieties. They've had one out the last five years, maybe a bit more, called Explorer, and that specifically goes into the uh, into Budweiser, and there are other new varieties coming. And this vari this open day they've got, um, they're looking at uh, progress over the last 20 years um, with Paul Barry, one of the leading plant uh, breeders. Uh, they're, looking at, they're looking at uh, variety trials, growing the crop and soil resilience and also cover crops and then Ramsbury uh, Brewery they're actually doing a tour of the brewery and a tasting of some of the beers and the lagers that they're brewing um, and then also from class uh, are actually going to be uh, uh, sort of helping you in a bit of a uh, presentation to talk from class and how to set your combine up so quite an interesting day and as I say from this invite you've just seen on the screen um, please do register sign up if you'd like to go as with all agri events it's always a really worthwhile day and obviously there's there's lunch in the middle of the day as well so please yeah please sign up and uh, and go to it if you're interested in spring barley and you live down that way because it will be very worthwhile so on to this week's update we've started our crusade against black grass and the uh, black grass team we have from Romania uh, started this last Monday so we have quite a lot of input uh, from them and looking at the crop and out in the fields with the pullers uh, they they uh, work for, on vegetable farms in Boston and just come to help me with black grass so a lot of input in uh, from them which uh, you'll hopefully you'll find en enjoyable we also continue love uh, removal of the house and taking the brick rubble uh, and all the and all the stone and the and the concrete paths uh, down to the where we're building the lane and also so we get a vibrating rolling from uh, from a friend and a real good one tone behind the tractor. So we look at that. The BBC have also been this week to record a piece on land use uh, and food production in general. And that's going to end up on the six o'clock and I think the nine or ten o'clock uh, news on BBC One um, this next week. So you might see that. Um, and uh, and also um, we look at spraying the oats. So I was spraying them myself. So we had a bit of a look at that from the sprayer. And now the GPS switches the um, sprayer on and off. And in the workshop, bit of a job going on at the minute is uh, is altering the fuel bowser. Um, we we can't clean it out inside, so we're cutting the top off and putting new lid on that. And we also tar and chip the main farm drive from the A17, uh, which it was definitely um, needed. There's also a very very short snippet of an autonomous tractor that uh, I went to see working this week. Some of you might have seen it on Twitter. I put it up, uh, but I'm going to have a more detailed look at that and a whole um, waffle update on that. Uh, in the next probably couple of weeks because it's it's worthy of half an hour, 40 minutes. It's absolutely fascinating. But just a teaser for you, I'm going to put about 10 seconds up of, of this machine um, running. Wednesday night, I'll be doing a full um, session, just one full video, half an hour on our iFarm event. And also, lastly, I visit one of the schools I'm working with in Lincoln, um, and they also, they're the ones that came to the farm with the children you saw a few weeks ago. We've got our Lincolnshire show coming up this week, and the school are, are doing a schools challenge where they're growing potatoes and uh, so I go into schools and they show me their presentation and uh, how they've uh, grown the potatoes um, I just love the children there they are just so engaging so polite so friendly and all credit to the school uh, for how these children are, are turning out in their education it's unbelievable anyway without any more from me and you can see why I now call it Wardy's Waffle here we go with this week's update so it's Monday morning, first day of black grass pulling. Got the same gang back here that we've had uh, for the last three years, I think. So, but there are one or two or a few that haven't done it before, so we need to show them what to do. So um, we'll just have a look with them and just show you how we go about it. Cause it's quite a detailed operation and quite important. It's done correctly. So this is the gang, they're from Romania. And we're just uh, getting the bags sorted now. We've just got a few more bags to bring down, but we're just getting some bags sorted. And then we've got to show them, uh, especially the ones who haven't done it before, show them how we pull them. Because obviously you've seen from my previous videos, it's quite important that we do it's done properly. This field here, just near where we parked, it's quite a lot of wild oats just in this corner. I'm a bit cross about this because 
I think from memory there was some here last year and so these should have been sprayed. I should have remembered this patch was here and sprayed them just this area. But anyway, uh, that's the wild oats and then this is the black grass. There's not much here, but there is some on this headland. So here's Alex just showing them how to do it. This field we are, there's 10 of them, this field we're going, uh, 10 of them in a 32 metre tram line. Uh, yes, that's an awful lot, they're very close together, but we need to make sure we get them all. And this field, there's more in this field than we've had for a few years. So there are some there, but you can't see them very well until you get down and look low. You can see there's quite a few here. There. Some more there. There. Yeah, quite a big patch here. This is a welfare trailer we have. We made it about a year ago. Put a portable on the front and converted a trailer. It was an old shoot trailer we bought. We'll have a look at that in a second inside. And it's Nala's first experience of black grass pulling. So that's it. I'm going to leave them to it now and come back in a couple of hours because sometimes it, uh, I know I know what I'm looking for and it just, uh, on the ones that haven't done it before and they keep missing them, it, it just does my head in. So I've just got to walk away and let Alex deal with them and get them used to it. But uh, they'll, they'll be fine. They'll do a good job in the next uh, in the next two or three weeks that it'll take us to go around the whole farm. Thirsty work, this black grass pulling, isn't it, Nala? of English partridge here. And the cock pheasant just there. Been at this feeder I think. Just come to have a look at the stone and rubble that Reuben and Tom have brought here from the house while I was uh, down in Cornwall, London last week. Not much left I don't think there to, to bring down. But there's a I'm surprised it's gone as far actually. Bit of timber and wood in it that I've just picked out here that we need to go down this and pick it all out. And uh, there's odd bits in it still. Just needs picking out because obviously we don't want to put that in the track. I'm going to take that out and it'll, it'll do for firewood. We decided to make the track three meters wide because we're not going to use it as much as some of the others but looking because we were we were a bit concerned we're a bit short of of uh, brick if we went too wide but looking at it we ought to be in three and a half meters wide now there all the way down i've just come to check on them they're having a break these are this is the little pile of oats and black grass they've pulled and a bit of rye grass in this field they're just having a break and this is the trailer that we've had what we made converted it all last winter so a bit over a year ago now toilet on it We've got water container as well here for drinking and washing the hands all in an insulated compartment hello. hello and there is alex hey flory flory yeah very english name yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is inside So waterproof trousers for everybody in the morning so when the dew is on we've got some seats out of a local coach uh, company that parks in the yard they were dismantling a coach so we've got some seats so yeah really nice unit for them Tom's just fetched this vibrating roll from a friend we're going to use to pack the track down and break up some of the concrete and the bricks Got his own engine on it. It's just been a bit tricky with the ramps, making sure they're right because they need to be wider for the tractor to when we do the roll. 
might need to move the ramps out a bit when we get the roll onto the top concrete. No, we're all right. got the BBC uh, cameras here again uh, doing a piece on food security and uh, cost of uh, our food and generally everything to do with food production rewilding uh, and environment and all that sort of thing which um, is great to keep getting this message across obviously the government have just uh, announced in their new food strategy which uh, to my mind could not be uh, more welcome and it's about time they've realized that uh, our food that we produce here um, is is not enough we're only 60 percent self-sufficient now and uh, government in the past have been saying import it all not a problem go green everybody that we uh, listen to whether it's um, um, George Monbiot or Chris Packham or anybody like that yes. friends of the earth soil association they all say protect the environment don't worry about food but that is clearly wrong Exactly. We've got this massive shortage from Ukraine and Russia and uh, we're now looking at, at food. Are we growing enough? We're just doing a piece to camera now. Nala was in the way. So Simon's just doing an introduction. This is the vibrating roll running. I can feel the ground shaking from, uh, from here. Done a good job crushing the bricks. Bits of concrete and things. Just need to pick some of this wood out. We're just widening this entrance here in line with the, the edge of the bridge there. I'm going to taper it in here. We've got Still got quite a few loads of this left, so we want to get it used while we can. So that's why Ruben's digging out. Good, uh, good depth there, because then we need some soil when we're finished to put up the side of the lane and all uh, next to the crop. Just spraying the oats, and just going to show you how the auto section control works. It's uh, best shown in the corners. So the green air on the screen here is what I've already sprayed. So you can see this grainy area on the left now, that's been sprayed from when I came down the field uh, this way. So that's been sprayed. So I'm now going to go around and go up this headland up the edge of the field here. So this part of the boom that's overlapping in a minute, won't uh, the nozzles won't come on. There we go. You just see on the screen there, they're off. All of a sudden they'll come all there we are they're all on now there we go and that's just gps switching all the nozzles on and off which saves so much time and of course chemical as well which is what we need to be looking at there that's got up to the spraying speed or nearly i've got it set there at 14k and it's doing 13.8 and the red lines are the tram lines up the field that way go there's one and there's one on the screen so these oats are looking really well apart from that wheeling there you can just see the wheel through the crop 
that's somebody driving all over the fields um, in uh, the early spring just uh, after the crop was drilled yeah we'll just stop and have a look but no please are these oats they were planted after a cover crop uh, and after sheep had grazed the cover crop planted I think um, early March so we'll just stop and have a look at them yeah there's the wheel through the crop There is, look at that, a bit of black grass. So we'll pull that and take that off. A bit thinner than I'd have liked, but you can just see looking at the ears, the grains, these are what's going to turn into the oats. And these aren't for human consumption, they're for uh, animal feed or they're for pet food rather. That's what most of these will go for. But these are the huskless sort. Yeah, I've just spotted a few more black grass plants in this wheeling. You can just see there some small ones. And I've just pulled these few. You can just see the ears on the top, but they're very small. Some of the ears aren't out. You can see there, the ears are hardly out. But there's a few just in this wheeling here. I think the best thing to do is I'm going to come back with a little knapsack sprayer, walk down this tram line. I know which it is. Yeah, some there, there. And I'm going to just round up this wheeling out. And I'll just have a look in the crop around here when I do it as well. But yeah, not uh, happy with this. The fact that this field, we don't normally have black grass in it. So it just shows how you've got to keep on top of it. I had a phone call yesterday from a, a chap I know who does some main roads tarring and chipping and he got some spare tar and uh, bitumen as they call it and chippings. So uh, I'm just sweeping the drive in front of the uh, main shed because it's cracked quite badly and he's going to just do this for us. One job we've been meaning to do for a while is sort this Bowser out and it's uh, it was made, or oh, must have been 25 years ago by Housams, uh, maybe even 30 years ago, just when they were starting making sprayers because they obviously started from uh, our village, uh, Lednam here in Lincolnshire and Housams made this for my father and... Um, it's 3,000 litres, that's what it'll, that's what it'll hold, it needs a sight tube changing as well. But what's happened is, the, it's got baffles in it, which is good, but if you look at the bottom, all it's got is a little triangular hole, which is fine to let the diesel through from one baffle to the next. But the problem is, you can't clean each section out properly. And we put, a few years ago, a drain tube a drain hole in the corner here a bung in the corner there but it means you've got to tip the bowser up onto one side to tip it over to flush everything through and all we had was a hatch here at the front that we fill it with and of course you couldn't get and see what was in here so we've cut the top out now so ian's cut this top out and we've made this ring and then we've got a plate to go on we've got captive nuts here we welded the nuts on underneath so we're going to now we can get into it and completely clean it out, which we've done. And we've got it welded up here. We're going to weld it all the way along to seal it. And uh, it's just spot welded at the minute. And then uh, put a lid on it. So that's another job that's wanted, been doing for a while. And the pump on it, it's got really good uh, Honda engine on it. It's over here. It wants some new um, seals in it. So we've got those. And so they need putting on as well. Then that will all be repaired. Ben's just on his way back to the house to load some more brick rubble. We've still got a bit of clearing up to do around the stables and offices. They're nearly finished now, which would be good to get in there. There's just a bit of stuff here to clear up. We've got a trench there to, to sort out, fill in. That's got the, all the internet and data cables in. Comes from the shed, from where the main point is in into the farm and well I haven't seen this for a few days we've been down in Cornwall crikey can't believe how thick these house floors are good six inches there and they've been down a long while the old tile floors 
so this house was originally built in the, I think it was 18 about 1840 I think the block the bricks will come clean brush them and brush them and wire them and uh, wash them they should be all right there they they're the thicker ones to cope with lorries coming on here when we put them down I think they're 80 millimeters thick these are but they've been down about 25 years there's Tom just come back for another load this is what this tarmac's like it was last done in 1976 I think it was when my sister got married you can see some biggest holes coming there and they said they're going to put a lot more tar and chippings in these areas so we'll see what they do we've already filled that little bit of a hole in there difficult near the main road like it wants a bit more chippings on there they've just put another layer on that so that's looking a bit better just laid that over the drain So just coming down this lane and there we have right in the distance we have a deer we can see it quite a big one as well there's quite a few down here but this one seems on his own I'm um, just arrived at a, a quite a bit of an interesting demo. I've got a tractor here on tracks, but it's uh, also robotic. There's no driver or cab. So we'll have a look at it working and uh, just show you a video of it now. Interesting design. Crop pheasant under the feeder. So this track is coming on. We're now bringing the quarry stone down from the menage that you've just seen us digging out but it's going to be a fairly steady progress over the next couple of years to get this right, I think, looking at it. The problem we've got a bit is we've got some of the stone now. It's gone out a bit on this edge here, so the lane's a bit wider than what it needs to be, But so we're going to have to bring that in. But this roll's doing a good job and packing it down ever so well. Just uh, washed the signs at the end of the gate. Ready for our open day tomorrow, so we'll see it. And Tom's cut the hedge back there, so we can just see the sign better. And this side as well. Busy time of the day, first thing in the morning here on this A17. It's the main road from uh, Newark to Kings Lynn. I've just come to see our team of uh, blackgrass pullers. We're on the field near the A17 now, you see the lorries. And I just thought interesting to show you, this is one of our wild but, uh, flower margins, but it's just starting to get a few other weeds come in it. These uh, cow parsley here or ketlocks, maybe not weeds, I know because there are insects, but it just shows how they change in time. But when you look at the huge volume of flowers that's coming here, it's incredible. Just a mass of color and just perfect uh, haven for insects. You maybe can't see them on this camera, but there's a just a huge amount of them. 
flying about and there's a little dragonfly just in there. I don't know if it's picked it up. There's a lovely bluey green moth. Just an abundance of wildflowers. A bee there flying about. Fantastic. And just come to Birchwood Junior School again in Lincoln to talk to the children and they're going to enter the next week. They've been growing potatoes for next week's Lincolnshire Show, the school's competition, and they want to do the presentation in front of me today and I'm just going to have a quick word and see how they're all getting on. Great to be back here. So here we go. Are you all okay? Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. So what are you going to show me today? Off we go. Hello. Firstly, thank you for coming in today to listen to us about our school's challenge journey so far. We are a creative and energetic team who are so excited to be representing our school and local community in the Lincolnshire Schools Challenge event at the Lincolnshire Showground. Before we begin our short presentation, we would like to introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Gabby. Hello, I'm Olivia. Hi, I'm Lily. Hello, I'm Olivia. Hi, I'm Lily. Hi, I'm Harry. Hi. We are a team of 15 year 5 and 6 children who successfully applied for a role on our school's challenge team and have been growing and creating a potato product during our lunch times. Our challenge is the Lincolnshire Roots Challenge, which has been in partnership with Brunson Potatoes. We really wanted to be able to say that we had grown our own potato. The other important thing for us was that the younger children at our school feel encouraged to do the same. We want to be role models to other pupils and at Birchwood Junior School and soon hope to have our own school allotment. This is meant that we are really able to speak about our own brand and product individually as we are all company experts. <laughs> we have worked with the film company too so our entire journey is documented and can be seen by the judges, other pupils at the school, other schools and teachers. This will be great for us to look back on our journey and see how far we have come. For this product, we have conducted market research at home and across our school. We have researched online for, uh, for different recipes and then put these recipes to fellow pupils and family members at home. Our farming mentor has been in contact with us during the stages, giving us helpful tips and advice on how to ensure our potatoes are the best possible products it can be. We invited Branson Potatoes into our school to listen to our pitch and gain valuable feedback. We also found out some amazing facts about potatoes. We made sure that our product was everything it needed to be. You can see the questionnaire results here. Over the last three months we have wanted to choose many things. We have wanted to learn how to farm and look after our vegetables. So we got our farming mentor Andrew in to discuss how farming works. We have even spent the day at his farm and learned so much about Lincolnshire farming. We wanted to design and grow a new and exciting product. To do this, we were inspired by, he by healthy eating and creating recipe cards and boxes. A big inspiration for us was being able to promote food that is locally grown and therefore good for the environment. We in Year 6 have been learning about climate change and the impact this can have and we care passionately about local food and how it's sourced. We hope to be able to showcase a wide range of products for raw potatoes and that is how we have created our brand, Birch Spud Juniors. Hello, I can climb this on level two. I have meal boxes available for meat eaters, vegetarians, vegetarians and vegans. Additional values as the nutritional values are also shown on the box too. So any more allergy allergies can easily see it be more suitable for them. I is for respectful of each other. C is for communication. H is for hard working. S is for sports. Our brand wouldn't survive without them. P is for polite. U is for unique. D is for determination. We have had such a wonderful experience on our school's challenge adventure and we have some photos on our iPads for you to look at along with the, with the filming of our journey and our TV advert. But here are some of our favourite photos so, so we will keep this on display whilst you ask us any questions you may have. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Redoing it all, you see. Look so at that. Being, um... Oh, yeah, plus um, the gardening club. We had a gardening club. Yeah. 
Um, we planted these flowers. Oh, we've got that a new is in September, oh we? brilliant that's so good what you're all doing yeah. we've, got, we've got over there a um a nature area yeah yeah and, wow um, it's, like it's, a, it's just full of different plants and things oh. so where um, wow here's mr muddy look he has wow. seen you hello <laughs> you missed a very good day at the farm the other week yes oh did you see it yeah, have, have the children seen yes, the video? Yes. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> Brilliant. Because some of the comments, I don't know who com you know who it is and not. Wow, these are the potatoes. Oh, yeah, look there. You want now with those. Um, uh, sunlight on those potatoes there it's nice to see them but the sunlight will make them go green right okay. so they'll so then they need to green, cover them up and, and what i would and say is there, it, so yeah that's cover. right so you don't want to be seeing any because it'll go green yeah i see what you mean because yeah 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 you see look at that brilliant starting. yeah so they're all just starting to flower yeah yeah they will you what i'll do as well is i'll actually give them they're all started and they're flowering is that when you pick them no they're nowhere near ready yet well i mean you could do like those you've got some lovely sweet those ones will be lovely and those baby ones in there they'll be oh they'll those be like baby ones would be lovely. They were, baby the baby ones. potatoes would be like like eating a cube of sugar that's it well done you've got some water uh some at this end i will try these here I think that's the one probably we, yeah. The green one or the purple? Both of them, really. Put some in both. Can you manage? That's it, in the middle a bit. That's it, well done. That's good. That's it, and then a bit, then the rest in that one, in that next one. If you can get in, I'll hold the. That's it, you go in there with it. Well done. That's it, brilliant. Right, this is very good challenge. Right, go on over your head. Well done, look at that. Well done. So you can just see what a fantastic group of children they are. I, I've just seen a presentation up in the classroom that they're going to do at the show next week. And I was really touched with how they've taken it on board. Some of the comments they've said about coming around the farm and how they've enjoyed it. And they are just a lovely, lovely group of children. And I really hope to keep in touch with them. And I've asked them also for their family when in harvest time to come back on the farm with their parents. So we'll see how we go. Today is Thursday and it's 27 degrees looking at the thermometer on this uh, on the farm van and when it's hot weather I take extra drinks and and treat the black grass pullers to an ice cream so here we have some of these there's 10 of them so I try and do this every day when the weather's as hot as this and then I've got some bottles of water as well because uh, I don't know about you but sometimes when I have an ice cream they are fantastic but then they make you thirsty afterwards so uh, we'll be at the black grass pullers in about two minutes so they've all got their ice creams and the water thank you so was Alex <laughs> They're just going around now to uh, start another field and I'll just have a quick chat with Alex and you'll see then what we do. So Alex here has been with us how many years, Alex, now? Uh, four years. Four years, yeah. yeah. And, four, and where are you all from? Romania, all uh, the same village. Yeah, from Romania. same village? Yeah. Right, and when you're not here with me, you're uh, working in veg farms in Boston? Yeah, different farms like Clements, Staples and yeah. factories. Yeah and but uh, on it's better here with you because we're trying to get more fresh air yes yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a nice job yeah yeah brilliant so the level of black grass we have now 
compared to when you first came? It's less and less by ear. Every less year. and less by ear, yeah. yeah. So everything we're doing, so the amount you're pulling, um, it gets less and less. But this year, uh, more wild oats possibly. We think, you, yes? Yes, then, we can say it by different fields. In one field, it's more more uh, oats. Yeah. And some of them just the edges yeah. with black grass. Right. And at the minute, we, we're having 10, we, you're all going in one tram line. So 10 of you for every 32 meters. And we need to be as close as that. Uh, yes, but we take uh, uh, in the field. We are not very very busy. We take two tram two lines. Two tram lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the black grass, there. some of it this year is only level with the top of the, the yeah, weeds. Yeah, so it's very difficult to see it. We're trying to to look uh, uh, on the level of the the crop. Yeah, we're getting down to to see it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's tricky, but but again, it's very hot today, yeah. and uh, we have our, our welfare trailer that, that we're going to be. That's just down the fails where you were yesterday. With that, we're bringing that back. Yeah. But it's important to have the brakes when it's weather like this, isn't it? And the yes, hot. yeah, yeah, very yeah. very yeah. important. Yeah, and. and uh, some of these people have some of them you one or two of them have been some of your your friends here have been before other years here yeah yeah some of them they are here from the first year yeah and uh, half team will be last year working here but they work different places right, so yeah. they know exactly what they need yeah, to yeah, do yeah. and how many other farms besides mine here do you do you pull black grass on and weeds uh none. no none right. no yeah it, it's it's uh, very in the first year we were uh, very surprised the people yeah with uh, this job because we didn't have nobody to no. do that no, no yeah yeah but 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 it's a, a very difficult job isn't it it's very, uh, it is uh, it's difficult in the first two three days till mm. everybody get used to it with yeah. uh, with see the yeah, grass yeah. if you if you come in the first year you, you're not going to, no, to be no. able without knowing somebody what to do and i'll just get this map here yeah. and uh you it's very important um we have we have time sheets here you can see time sheets so that everybody uh, so alex knows wh who's come where and this is a map i give alex so alex just explain if you would please with the map what it what it all means um in in every in every field we in, in uh, we count the hours we are working yep in the same field and, th and this and is and this is so i can put this on my field record program so that because we're spending less on herbicides uh we, and generally around the farm we uh, we treat every field for the amount of hours and we have a direct cost of hand pulling the weeds so that goes into my cost of production so alex here puts the date here you can see this particular field the date and the number of hours and that is the total um uh, sort of people hours of the number of hours they're in the field times by the number of people in the in the team so, so that's what you do yes and we're trying to put the hips uh, with the uh, black grass and uh, and the oats in every corner but sometimes in the on edges the first tram lines it's uh it's a little bit too much so we put we make more more hips so that field there you can see this is the one you've just finished you've got five heaps uh, no more uh, th six 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 heaps around around that field so then then we'll go around and and, uh, and collect them with the with the forklift um so it, uh, it's important as well. We we take everything off the field, don't we? Yeah. All the weeds. Yeah. We don't drop we, them in the field. No, we we we're getting out with all the roots. Yeah. Yeah. So it's no possibility to grow again. Mm. Year by year, we saw that it's less and less, less and less. Actually, this year is very good mm. comparative with. The, the previous one yes and then when you drive about the country some of you were telling me yes. yesterday yes we can so uh, from the car we driving to to highway mm. to see all the fields but in every field we see oats and black grass mm. Mm. so i didn't so nobody do this job no exactly no, no. nobody except yeah. you and so and then to, to go into those fields and you pull those it would be a a, a big big job now big job now mm. yeah but we started here 10 years ago alex has been here as you said four years and doing a cracking job and i must say alex is looking after this team exceptionally well and i can put faith and trust in alex um because we need to do that i'm so busy doing other things we need to have somebody here managing and looking after the team and alex is fantastic at that and you can see we get on really well we know each other very well <coughs> and speak and alex speaks very good at english so understanding my lincolnshire alex is very very good <laughs> good yeah thank, thank you alex thank, thank you, you. Thank you.
Just going around collecting some more oats that or black grass and any weeds that the uh, Alex and the gang have pulled. This field was the field that we planted about the 25th of September, the only one we did uh, in September. And it's the only one we've done in September for about 10 years. And uh, at the minute, this is what we're, we're, I'm picking up. That's purely out of this field. More wild oats than black grass though. Um, you can see here are the wild oats and the thinner ones, here's the black grass. That's the, find the ears, here we go. There's the ears of black grass and uh, some more oats here. And I've had to come around the outside of the grass margin because they couldn't, sort of the bags they put them in, they couldn't carry them to the end of the field right at the end there where their welfare trailers, which is where the farm track is. So I've had to come around the outside, which I don't like doing. But anyway, just come around with the bucket every night and collect them with the fork and then uh, take them off the field so they don't seed. So doing a cracking job, uh, despite it being uh, very hot. So I've just collected another heap here in the corner of this field. That's the last of it now. That's, so that's that whole bucket out this 48 acre field. And you can see now why I want to put this new track in. I'm now at the corner where we put the new bridge in last October. The big culvert pipes, one metre diameter, and we've just put the new track in this last week. So it brings us out at this corner. So